you. So today we're going to talk about breathing. So it should be something that comes natural to us. <laughs> I mean, I'm now 41 years old, three children, and when I learned about the connection breath, I was like, light bulb going off. Oh, I didn't actually understand what was happening in my body when you breathe correctly. So specifically, we're going to talk about the connection breath that you need to learn how to do after you've given birth before you start any higher loading activities. So that might be cardio work, it might be strength training, it can even be lifting your kids up. If you want to do it safely so that your whole core is connected and you don't end up with pelvic floor issues. And this is like my number one concern right now is when we're doing a lot of our diastasis exercises, we are talking about bringing up our TVA, so our transverse abdominis, bringing up our pelvic floor and working our core together. But we also need to realize how to release our pelvic floor with our full breath. So what we're going to work on is this connection breath and I'm going to teach you a little bit about how our core works all together. So the first thing I want you to realize is that your core is like a canister. So let's have a think about our canister, it's here. And at the top of the canister is your diaphragm. So this is right up here inside your ribs. And the bottom of the canister is your pelvic floor. So all down here, so that's full of muscles and connective tissue, keeping everything inside the canister. <laughs> okay, and the sides are our abs, so our transverse and our obliques, the front being our rectus abdominis, and our back being all of our spinal muscles. So think of this nice canister that we have with our diaphragm, pelvic floor, abs, and back. Now, everything is connected. So when you breathe, when you inhale, so we fill up our lungs here, what actually happens is your diaphragm lowers and it conceptually um, contracts on that inhale. And what that does is it pushes pressure down and your pelvic floor will actually take that pressure. So as you inhale, you should feel your pelvic floor widen and have a slight pressure going downwards. Now conversely, when we exhale, everything recoils up. So if we think about it here, when we do our inhale, everything drops and on our exhale, it comes back up. So this is our core working on our inhale, and our exhale. Now, what tends to happen, especially after we've had kids, we're all a little scared to let loose. So on our inhale, we have a tendency to try and keep everything tight. So what you need to sometimes to do is to actually retrain your body. And to retrain your body, you need to sit down and you need to think about inhaling, and allowing that pressure to come down and your pelvic floor to widen and the pressure to go through. And on a healthy pelvic floor, there shouldn't be any leakage or anything of any urine or any issues going down. So you want to learn to release because if you never release your pelvic floor, it can cause a lot of issues. So think about your bicep. If you always kept your bicep contract in this contracted position, what's going to happen? You can't release your arm, so your arm won't be able to straighten. So what's going to happen is your bicep's going to be too tight and your triceps, so down the back of your arm, is going to be in an overstretched position and that's going to end up weak. So same thing with your pelvic floor, is if it's always too tight and always being squeezed and contracted up, it's going to cause other muscles in your core to be too weak to be able to do anything. So causing the reverse sort of action. So what we need to learn to do is do that connection breath. So we need to inhale 
allow our ribs to expand, our diaphragm to drop, allow our pelvic floor to widen and have some pressure go against it. And then on our exhale, everything coming back up and in. So when we are doing our canister here and we're going down on our inhale, when we are recoiling, it comes in and up. So that's when our TVAs start engaging and everything comes together. So it can be hard. It can be hard to let go. <laughs> um, and what you need to be able to do to start with is to start doing this in some different supported positions. So standing can be a lot harder to do a connection breath when you're first starting because you have no other support on you. So you're holding up your whole core, you're holding up your head and your body. Um, so if you start, starting whilst you're seated or in a side lying position or on your back before you start when you're standing is a great idea. So remembering we're inhaling, allowing the pressure to go down and exhaling everything coming up now it's so important that you learn to do that connected breath before you start doing any other exercises and you'll be able to use this breath when you are doing your exercises so i know you hear me say all the time like in the squats or when you're standing up exhale on the exertion so if you're sitting down on a chair and you're coming to stand up you should be doing that on an exhale which will bring up your pelvic floor and everything's going to be nice and tight and supported on that exhale now do you need to think about this all the time no you don't because once you have allowed yourself to reconnect with your body it will happen naturally and the only time that you really need to think about it is when you're doing something that's fully, you've got a lot of exertion going on. So for an example, um, doing a glute bridge, you don't need to do too much of that exertion and a really strong pull up because you're not really lifting a lot of weights or anything. But if you were doing squats with a 200 pound uh, bar on your back, well then you're really gonna have to squeeze everything up when you come up. So it's a bit, it's, think of it as a graded breath. So if you're not, if you're doing something that's in an everyday use, then you don't really need to think about it. As long as you've worked previously on connecting and you understand and your breathing is going nicely and in and you're not thrusting and you've got a connection with your pelvic floor then you can simply go about your day-to-day -day work now if you're going to pick up that car seat with your 30 pound baby in it well then absolutely think about the exhale and concentrate on the pelvic floor and the TVAs all engaging as you lift on that exhale. Anyway, I really hope that helped and do practice it. So let's just repeat what we need to do is before you start, especially any high impact cardio work, make sure that you have learned to reconnect with your breath. So on the inhale, your diaphragm contracts and everything pressure goes down your pelvic floor will feel pressure and widening. And then on the exhale, you'll feel everything come back up and from the canister in as well. Okay, let me know if you have any questions below and I'll answer them later. Okay, bye.